Hello and welcome, I am your Code Monkey, and in this series we're creating Spider-Man in Unity 2D. In this video we're going to take our enemies and add a health system. Let's begin. So here's the scene so far. We have our Spider-Man, he can attack towards the mouse. There are two enemies in here. They are being spawned from prefab so we can instantiate as many as we want. And if I go here and I click near him, I can attack that one. And if I click on this one, I can attack this one. All right, so far everything looks great. Except obviously for the fact that no matter how many times I hit him, the enemies never actually die. So we need to add a simple health system to the enemies. Now, before we do that, let's sort out one issue. Now, the enemy that I attack is being selected based on the position near where I click. So if I'm near the enemy and I click on him, it looks just fine. However, if I'm way over here and I click, you can see that it still attacks the enemy. This is because we are calculating an enemy near the mouse position, where it should be near the Spider-Man position, but pointed towards the mouse position. So if I click in here, I should be looking for enemies around this area. So let's go into the code. Here in our Spider-Man class, down here on the handle attack, we are checking for the closest enemy to the attack position, which is set on the mouse worm position. Instead of doing that, let's calculate the attack position to be near the Spider-Man, but towards the direction of the mouse. So let's calculate a vector three of the direction to the mouse. Calculate that, taking the mouse worm position minus our Spider-Man position and then normalize the whole thing. So now our attack position will be the get position, so the position of our Spider-Man, plus the direction towards the mouse position, and multiplied by an offset of, let's say, about 20 units. So this calculates a position moving 20 units away from the Spider-Man position towards the mouse. So that sets the attack position, and the rest of the code works perfectly fine. All right, so here I am in between both of them. And if I click on here, yep, I'm attacking that one. Click on this one, attack this one, okay. And now if I go away and I click right on top of this one, yep, you can see that he's no longer being hit. I'm attacking, but since there are no enemies near around this position, then that guy is not being hit. And if I move closer, yep, now he's being hit. Okay, great. Let's just clean up our code in here to remove these magic numbers. All right, so our code is now clear and very easy to follow. So now let's set up the enemy health. We're going to keep things very nice and simple. So let's first go into the enemy class and in here on the member variables, let's just simply define an int for the enemy health. Very simple. On awake, let's set the health to three, okay. And down here on our damage function, let's decrease the health by one, okay. Then let's also make a public bone function for testing if he is dead and we'll simply return if the health is under zero. And in here on damage, if this enemy is now dead, then let's simply destroy the game object. Now we also need to go up here when grabbing the closest enemy, we have to ignore the enemies that are dead. So in here simply do if the enemy dot is dead. So if this enemy is dead, then continue. So let's just ignore this one. Continue simply continues to the next enemy on the cycle. So if the enemy is dead, this does not get run. Now we could also simply remove him from the list when he dies, but for now, let's leave them all in there. So let's run the game. Okay, there's the enemies, and now if I hit him, one, two, three, and poof, he vanishes. So he is correctly taking damage, and since he has three health, after three hits, he vanishes. Now just for testing, let's go back into the game handler and in here we set this function to automatically create enemies. So let's remove that comment just so we can test damaging multiple enemies. Okay, so here I am and as you can see, enemies are being spawned and if I hit him, yep, three hits, he's dead. One, two, three, he's gone. One, two, three, gone. One, two, three, gone. And it works with all of them. Okay, great. Now just vanishing enemies obviously isn't very fun. So let's make them fly away when they actually die. Now in order to make them fly, I'm going to use the script that we created in a previous video, the flying body script. You can check out the video to see the home creation of the script, but essentially it's very simple. We have a static create function, we give it a prefab, a spawn position, and a fly direction. It instantiates the prefab, adds the flying body component, and sets up with the flying direction. Then on update, it simply moves the transform towards the fly direction, it increases the scale every update, rotates them, and after one second destroys itself. 
So it's a pretty simple but satisfying effect. Now in order to use it, the one thing we need is a prefab to instantiate. So let's create an empty game object and give it the sprite renderer. And in here I have a texture for an enemy flying body. So this is a sprite that won't be flying away. So let's make it into a prefab. So create a new prefab, pf enemy flying body and drag the game object onto it, okay. Now let's go into the game assets to add a reference for our prefab. So a public transform pf enemy flying body. Now in here, let's drag the reference, okay. And now let's go back into the enemy script. And down here, when he takes damage, if he is dead, we still destroy this game object, but then we want to instantiate the flying body. So let's do flying body dot create using the static create function. Now again, in here we take a prefab. So we go into the game assets dot instance dot grab the enemy flying body prefab. We spawn him on this position. And with regards to the fly direction, it will be the same direction that he was attacked in. So in here we are calling the direction to the attacker. So we want the reverse of that to keep going from where the attacker attacked him. So direction to attacker multiplied by minus one F. All right. So now when he dies, he should spawn a flying body. Let's see. All right, there's the enemy. And if I hit him, one, two, three, and yep, there you go. He's flying away. One, two, three, fly, fly, fly. All right. So we now have a nice satisfying effect for when an enemy is killed. Now let's make it more impactful by moving Spider-Man forward on attack and giving the enemy a slight knockback. So first let's go into our enemy code. And in here, we are going to check if he is dead, then we do that. If he is not dead, then we do something else. So enemy is still alive. And essentially in here, we only want to play the hit animation if he is still alive. If he's dead, obviously it doesn't matter. And if he's still alive, then let's knock him back. So we do that by moving the transform dot position, move it towards the direction to the attacker times minus one F, since we don't want to move to, towards the attacker, but rather away from the attacker. So move him away by, let's say five units. So minus one F times five F, okay. So float, knock back distance, let's put it at five F, and that's what we're going to use in here. So if he's still alive, we move him away from the attacker by a distance of knockback distance. So now let's go into the Spider-Man. And in here, when we are attacking, first in here, we are checking if there is an enemy or not. So in here, there's an enemy in range. If not, there's no enemy in range. So if there is no enemy in range, then we are simply punching into the air. Then let's move him towards the attack direction. So we need to actually define the attack direction up here. We do have to recalculate if we do have an enemy. So calculate it again in there and calculate it in here. So if there is no enemy in range, then simply do a transform dot position and move him towards the attack there by a dash forward amount. Okay, so if there is no enemy, simply move him forward by this amount, all right. Now, if there is an enemy, First, we're gonna call the damage function so that the enemy gets knocked back or killed. And then after we do, first we need to check out if he is dead. So if the enemy dot is dead, if he is dead, then we want to move forward the same as before, okay. But if he is not dead, let's position him relative to where the enemy was knocked back to. So we're going to set the transform dot position to be at the enemy dot get position plus the attack direction reversed multiplied by a distance to enemy. Float distance to enemy and let's say 5F. Okay. So if the enemy is dead, then we dash forward the same as if there is no enemy. If the enemy is not dead, then he's still there. So the enemy was knocked back, then we grab the position where he was knocked back to, then we apply the reverse of the attack direction and we move by a certain amount. This way, every time we attack an enemy, we stay exactly within the same distance of him. Okay, so we should be seeing the enemy knocked back and Spider-Man right next to him. Okay, so here I am. First of all, let's try and see if we dash when we attack. And yep, there you go. He's moving slightly forward every time we attack. Okay, and now if I approach an enemy and I hit him, the enemy should get knocked back and I should also move forward. And yep, there it is. He's moving towards the enemy. The enemy gets knocked back and as you can see, 
no matter how far I attack him. So if I attack him this far, he goes exactly within the same distance. And if I'm very close, also the same distance. So the animation always connects. All right, so far so good. Now the hit particle should really only spawn if I hit something. So if I'm hitting the air, it really doesn't make much sense to see all of these hit particles. So let's make sure they only spawn when I actually hit an enemy. So back on our Spider-Man class, down here we are spawning the hit particles in here inside our play punch or kick animation. Now we only want to trigger this if we do attack an enemy. So let's go up here and simply define a ball for hit enemy. And if the enemy is not null, then we did hit an enemy, so hit enemy set to true. And if no enemy is in range, then set to false, because we didn't hit any enemy. And down here, we are simply going to spawn the impact effect if we did hit the enemy. If not, then we don't spawn anything. Do the same thing there and in here. Alright, so now the hit particles should only spawn if I actually hit something. So in here, if I hit the air, yep, no particles, didn't hit anything, just punching the air. And if I hit him, yep, there's the particles. There's a nice solid hit. All right, good. So now final, let's add a little screen shake. There is a simple screen shake function on the CodeMonk utility, so let's use that. And we want to shake only when we actually hit an enemy. So in here, let's do the utils class dot shake camera. Then we give it an intensity and a timer. So let's test out these values. All right, here I am, and if I hit the air, yep, no particles, no screen shake, okay. And if I hit an enemy, yep, there you go, a very slight screen shake and the particles as well. Now let's make a tiny bit more screen shake when we actually kill an enemy, just to differentiate the two. So in here, instead of shaking every time, when we don't hit an enemy, do a screen shake. When we do hit an enemy, do slightly more. Okay, here I am, and I hit nothing, and nothing happens, hit an enemy. One, two, three, and as you can see on the third one, when he was killed, it shake a bit more. One, two, three, and yep. So we can now attack the various enemies and it looks very nice and they fly away. All right, so there you have it. We added health to the enemies and various effects to make hitting them feel very satisfying. In the next video, we're going to set up enemy movement. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.